Today is a perfect day for gardening. Hi, I'm Amy. Welcome back to Hummingbird Hill. And today is the absolute perfect day for gardening, at least in my opinion. It is cloudy, as you can see, slightly overcast. It's around 50 degrees and it is just refreshing to be outside. There is a cat who is attempting to, well, do what cats do and rub all over me and the camera, which is slightly problematic but that's okay, she's fun. Silly purr. Um, so today actually is my goal to bring all of my plants that are currently have been hardening off for the last weekish down into the garden, get them planted with a bunch of seeds as well, and then move all of my plants that are still inside outside to start the hardening off process so I can get them planted next week. I have a ton of plants and I cannot wait to get these beds filled. So I'm just gonna get to work and I hope that you'll stick around and stay with me. First of all, I've gotta carry a whole bunch of plants from up the hill down to the garden. So I'm gonna get started on that. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go carry a bunch of plants down. Well, that didn't take as long as I thought because I just realized most of the plants I've been hardening off have been my tomatoes. I have multiple tomato plants. Obviously I can't plant them all, I don't have room, but I have backups, which is good. Of course I thought maybe I'll sell some this year. Give some away to friends. Not gonna happen. Oh well. <laughs> I brought down what I have and I have to go get all my seeds and then I'm gonna get planting. So I will meet you back in the garden. So, planting the garden, day two. Actually trying to get things planted instead of just my tomatoes. Uh, yesterday we had company come over at around 11, the best sort of company. So we spent hours and hours talking and not so much got done in the garden. By the time they left, it was fully sunny out and not this perfect gardening weather. It is overcast. There is a cool, crisp breeze and it is just right, again, for getting seeds in the ground. The first thing I need to do today is get my hay bales uncovered so I can really look at where things are. Last year, bed by bed, I put my seeds in and my plants in and I wrote down everything meticulously where things were so that I wouldn't necessarily plant in the same space. It's not as important to rotate um, when you amend the soil well, but it still helps. This year, with stuff in every bed and not a clean slate to start from, I'm having a little more trouble figuring out where to put things. And the whole hay bale end of the garden is a totally new game for me. So I need to really look at it, kind of go around, lay my seed packets out, figure out where I want to put things. And of course, I still have peppers, eggplants, cucumbers, melons, maybe something else that I just started hardening off after I moved the tomatoes out. Um, I thought I had, oh, celery. I thought I had more things out hardening off, but the tomatoes really took up all the room I had on the porch, which is the only safe place, or was the only safe place from the chickens. The little rascals have started going on the porch. Now, Snap, Crackle, and Nibbles have always gone up there, but the roosters have been hanging out on my steps. There's a video, well, it may be too long. No, there's a video over on Instagram, or I'll insert it here, because ew, and ew. <sighs> chickens. This is a new occurrence. The roosters have never ventured onto the porch before, nor has Dapple. But lately I've been coming up here and finding the flock sitting on my steps, 
which is all well and good and cute. Except as you notice, hello rascals, they like to leave me little presents. And by little, I don't mean little. Really, boys, look, see, you see that? Oh, so gross. Like I said, I love free range chickens. Look at Dazzle's tail. That's why it's called Dazzle. Isn't he pretty? <coughs> oh, and you're going to crow about it? Little rascal butt. In any case, I may have to block off, which will be super inconvenient for me, this lower section of the steps. Put a little gate there. So this does not happen. <coughs> So I'm going to get started right now with removing the plastic covers uh, and folding those up so that I can use them for other things. And then I'm going to get started planting some seeds today. And it's starting to sprinkle, so hopefully I can film. Hmm, it's starting to sprinkle more. Hopefully I can film. Otherwise, I'll put you away and then I'll show you when everything's done. Just got to get things done in the garden. Can't wait all the time for the weather. I don't know if you can hear it or see it, but over on the fence right there, there's a pheasant, I think. Or a quail. No, I think it's a qu I think it's a quail. I don't know if you can see him. But you hear that that sound right there? I hadn't I hadn't heard that chirping before, so I came to look. Let's see if I can zoom you in and see if you can see him. Oh, I don't know if I can zoom you. Mm -hmm. My fingers are too wet. It won't let me zoom. You probably can't see him at all. But listen to him. Isn't he cute? Make the sound again, little bird. He's being quiet because he realized I was watching him. Let's see, I don't even know if you can see him over there. Like right there. And of course I can't see where I'm pointing because the screen is facing away from me. Okay, hold on, I could just pause it and see. Hold. There, I turned you around. Let's see, he's right there. No, no, that's super fuzzy. He's right there, little guy. I don't know if you can see him, but it's a cute little quail. All right, I need to get back to like, gardening, not watching the cute little quail. I've seen quail around a few places, um, but you don't spot them very often. And this is the first time I've seen one actually on our property, especially this close to the garden. Um, and he's just got the cutest little sound. That's what caught my ear. I was like, I haven't heard that bird chirp by the garden before. It was a quail. Okay, I'm gonna get back to work. Let's go back over. Thank you. 
Okay, that was fun. There's a quail, oh my gosh. And he's just sitting over on the fence still and I'm wondering if they're gonna nest in that little bramble over there. That would be exciting. <laughs> um, I thought I'd bring you down and show you what the hay bales are looking like at the moment because it's kind of interesting. Um, part of this is because I had them covered up with the black plastic for about two weeks to keep them protected from the rain. Ideally, they cooled down about a week ago, which is when I started planting in them. Um, but ideally, I would have planted as soon as they were all cooled down, but there was literally so much rain, it wasn't going to be possible without washing away all the nutrients. Well, when you cover, <laughs> hay that is decomposing with a black plastic, you get this lovely display. Um, wouldn't that make an awesome decoration for Halloween? Yeah, who needs these like normal pristine hay bales? Let's get something with like some fungus on it. Oh my gosh. Um, this is not a problem. I'll just scrape. Let's see. Can you see there? This, yeah, this is not a problem. I'll just scrape it off. So, and I can pull them out. Um, leave them here. They'll decompose actually and add some more nutrients, but I'll probably scoop them off. Um, I don't want them fully growing cause they'll take up the nutrients in the bale and they aren't mushrooms I can eat cause that would be cool. Um, you can do mushrooms in like straw bales, hay bales, decompose them and use them. There's a gentleman that I saw on Instagram who has a book about that. He has a book about many things with straw bales. I haven't read the book, but it looks interesting. Yeah, so you could do that, but these I'll just scrape off and it'll be fine. Looks kind of gross. Actually, I think it looks really cool. Um, but if you're not into like decomposing stuff, not your thing, I get it. Um, so yeah, I need to obviously come around and scrape all of these. As you can see, it's a fine collection of fungus. But, oh, the thing that I'm really excited about. So this again, first time planting in the hay bales, the straw bales, minor hay, but most people do straw bale planting. I just use what I had. First time planting. So I planted seeds in a few of the bales last week. And you know, the first time you do anything, you're a little worried about it. And I came out and in this bale, I planted some dragon tongue bush beans. And I was worried because I came out and one of them was up kind of on the surface. So I was super bummed about that. However, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Let's see, can you see right there? You probably can't see down in there, but look, if you can see that, there is a sprout. I don't know. I hope you could see that, but they're sprouting. That is so cool. And the fact that I can see them probably means I need to compress my bale a little bit more, squish it together. One thing I noticed that Christine at Straw Bale Garden Australia does is she has like stakes at the end of her hay bales to kind of squish them in. And I might need to do that um, just to give them a little more tightness because the roots do need like to grow down. They need something to push against a little bit. That's my theory anyway. The sweet potatoes, I use the shovel to weigh down my smaller containers just so they wouldn't blow away. It hasn't been super windy, but um, I'm keeping them covered to just give them a chance since I had them sitting in the box for a couple of weeks. And you're supposed to do that anyway, apparently, uh, when you move the um, snips, the slips outside. So I'm just going to keep scraping here. Okay, cat. The cats are super helpful. Okay, I love cats. But in the garden, sometimes they try to kill me. I don't think they mean to, but literally, if I weren't so good at jumping over things and kind of doing the splits, I would be broken by now. All right, I'm gonna put you back down, get to scraping these off, so then I can get to planting seeds. The coil's not there anymore. I, there's another one over in the field over there. We have more quail. We actually thought, because we have silkies and silkies will sit on anything, actually my silkies don't sit that much. Um, my coochin is the one who broods well. Okay, the two baby silkies, 
sit like anything. But the only reason we had babies is because Dapple Doodlebug sat on them. Joe had the babies, but then did not want to sit on them until like the last three days before they hatched. Okay, cat, that's helpful. In any case, one of the things we always thought about doing was having one of our silkies get some quail eggs and have the silky hatch them and then release them in the area just because quail are so cool. Yeah. Um, probably not gonna do that right now. I think I have enough things that I'm trying for the first time, but that would be so cool. Quail are so adorable. As long as they don't eat things in my garden. Hmm, I'll have to keep an eye on them. Sorry for the butt view, but so last weekend I planted some seeds in the bales by the trellises and the dragon tongue bush beans, which I just showed you are sprouting. One of the problems I'm going to have now is there are some grasses growing up, but there are also things I planted growing up. So I have to be careful not to pick the things that I planted out or scrape them. So mm, that'll be a challenge, but I guess I'll just let them go grow and then I can tell when they're weeds and I'll pull them when they don't start making flowers or fruit. Yeah, that's the ticket. I'll be right back, I'm almost done. So, those are ready to plant in. I'm gonna just take the mushroom scrape things off the top and throw them in the compost and tuck them under. They'll just help break things down. One of the things I'm noticing is there are some interesting spiders around here. And there was another bird sound over by the hill that I haven't heard before. So lots of new and interesting things in the garden today. Um, yeah. And out there, somewhere like in one of those thickets of blackberries, there is a coyote den. Pretty sure it's there. Could be over just a little farther, but pretty sure it's there. We see them occasionally in that field. Right there. Um, seen them, seen them. Saw one once out in our hay field. Have not seen them elsewhere on our property. Now, of course, we're not up 24 seven watching, um, but they are around close. You can hear them at night. It's really kind of amazing and creepy when they're super close because those things get to talking. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know, we have one of the reasons we have the donkeys is because they're pretty good protection as far as that goes. We had goats, uh, two goats at a time, and we gave those to a friend who has a bigger goat herd just so that they had more care and more friends to play with. Um, they just weren't it wasn't the right time for us to have goats. So yeah, last summer we had to say goodbye to them, but they're really happy where they are. So they have lots of friends and they um, insist upon getting out of his fences, which is kind of funny. All right, next step. What am I doing next? That's the problem here. So many things to do. I'm gonna get my garden stool and look at my seeds. Come on, let's go.